stuff. This will do. The derivative, right? It tells you how is this situation changing. It's what we call a rate of change. In this case, the rate of change is, um, I guess what would you call it? Infections per day or something like that, right? We don't want to know about this. We know it's always increasing. It's always positive, right? What we want to know is, how's that thing changing? How is the derivative changing? So I need to not just differentiate to get this. I actually need to differentiate again to find how this rate of change is changing. Can I say that one more time? I want to know how the rate of change is changing. Is it getting faster and faster? Are we in trouble? Or is it getting slower and slower? We're actually, it's working. Okay? So what I'm looking for is the derivative of the derivative. That's a bit long and awkward to say. So instead what I call this is the second derivative. And so to distinguish between these, I actually even accidentally said it about one minute ago. We called the derivative, which we've just been calling dy and dx or whatever, f dash, we call the derivative the first derivative because what happens when you differentiate? Once. But if you want to know something about how that thing's changing, how the rate of change is changing, then you have to differentiate a second time, we call it the second derivative. Okay? So this is how the rate of change is changing. Okay? Now, this is a practical example. I actually want to help you understand this with something that we can work with. So, I would like you to uh, graph, again, just roughly, um, this guy here. I would normally ask you to graph it. I would say, there's the equation right there. y equals x times x minus 3 all squared. And then I would say, off you go, graph it. But actually, that would take too much time. So I'm just handing the graph to you because I'm, um, I'm nice and uh, gracious like that. So here's the graph. Um, you will need the equation, though, because in a second, we're going to differentiate this and work with it. Okay? So if I give you a function, uh, y equals x times x minus 3 all squared, um, I'd like us to work out what's going on here in regard to these things here. Okay? So to differentiate this, it's not in a very nice form to differentiate at this particular moment in time. It's factorized, which makes it easier to graph. Um, but I have to use a product rule, and I'd really like to avoid that if I can. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest if you've already written the function like I asked, let's expand this. And an expanded polynomial is generally easier to differentiate. Okay, and this guy's not hard to expand. What's x minus 3 all squared? What do you get? Square the first, which gives you x squared. X squared. You double the product and then you square the other one, so plus 9, fantastic. Okay. So I've done the square and now I'm going to expand out and have no more brackets. So that leaves me with what on the next line? x cubed, yep, minus 6x squared plus 9x, fantastic. Okay. So now that I've got my function in about as easy a form as possible to differentiate, um, I want us to differentiate it. Okay. So let's go to the first one, the first derivative. Okay dy on dx. This is easy. We could do this in our sleep, right? Someone tell me. Yeah, go ahead, Mo. 2x squared. Ooh, hold on, hold on. 3x squared. 3x squared. Yeah, you're on the right track. We've got to bring the power at the front first and then reduce. Yep. Minus 12x plus 9. Fantastic. Okay, let's just pause there before we go any further. Okay. Now, you might notice on this graph that I've given you, I've put a whole bunch of points, coordinates, okay? And the reason why is because I want to understand what does this tell us about the graph at different places, okay? So what I've done is, and here's one I've prepared earlier, right? On this graph, don't write this by the way because it's going to get really messy really fast on your graph. I've taken this thing, our derivative, and I've just subbed some values in at those particular spots to see what the derivative actually is equal to. This is what it's actually equal to at those particular spots. Let me zoom in so you can see, sorry, my writing is a little bit small. Okay, um, what kind of things stand out to you? What do you notice? Any interesting characteristics that jump out at you? Um, two stationary There's two stationary points, fantastic. And you can see them where I've marked in the derivative is equal to zero. Okay, what else do you see? Yeah. Each number has a number, the second one of it. So like minus three has a Ah, so there's like a symmetry to it. 
That's funny. There's a symmetry to the derivative values. There's no minus three. I wonder why there would be a symmetry to the derivative values. I'm just going to park that thought for a second, okay? Magic. What, what else do you notice? Anything else do you notice? You might know I've put colors on here. The colors are not accidental. What do you think the colors signify? Positive. Positive and negative, okay? Now this is important because looking at the language we developed earlier, right? Uh, let's use red to start with. Uh, over here on the left hand side, right? How would we describe this? Well the gradient is positive. So this section of the graph, um, it's increasing. Do you agree? Up it goes, right? But then you um, get to the stationary point and suddenly you're like, oh, this is going to have this downward trajectory. So we don't call that increasing, we call it... We don't call it increasing, we call it... Decreasing. decreasing. Thank you. Okay, we're awake. Alright, so this section here, right, as you slide down the roller coaster, and then of course your first derivative, uh, it changes back to positive. And you can go ahead, you can um, test these values out if you like. Um, that's like three and a half is the x value there. If you put three and a half into this, you should get 3.75. Okay, so this is what the first derivative tells us. We, we already knew this, right? We would say increasing, decreasing, that's the information this gives you, okay? But I said right from the outset, I was trying to understand um, this graph, this logistic model, right? So that means we actually have to think about this guy, the next derivative down, okay? Now, let me catch up. For reasons that will become clear in a second, I'm not going to write the proper notation for it because it's weird and warrants its own explanation. So I'm just going to really, really, really write down second derivative. What is it equal to? And thankfully, we've already had people write. Yeah, we'll come to it. We'll come to it. It's 6x take away 12. Yeah? Okay. Now this is even simpler because every time you differentiate, you go down. Your polynomial gets, you know, goes from 3 to 2 to 1, so it's very simple. You could put the values in for yourself, but again, um, I wanted to save you a bit of time. So here's the same function, 